Social theory is a tool to develop what we call the sociological imagination. That's our ability to see or imagine in our mind's eye the structure of society. And this includes the social institutions, things like the educational system, the healthcare system, the political system, religion, media, the industries in our society, how all of those systems affect our daily lives and how the culture and the social structure of a society can have an impact on things that we can measure like social problems, a certain behavior or a trend in society, even things like current events. And so social theory can guide research. We've all heard the term too theoretical, but keep in mind that the role of theory is to develop these explanations for phenomena, things that happen to individuals in society. And the goal is then to test those explanations by collecting data using sociological methods. Remember, everything has individual psychological, genetic, biological, environmental, and many other types of factors. It's just that we're looking at the sociological, or in other words, the structural factors in analyzing behavior as a whole in society, not trying to predict an individual's behavior or try to figure out why an individual did something. We're looking at broader patterns of behavior in society. So back to social theory. There are three central theories in sociology. In some ways, all of the other theories are kind of like sub theories to these three perspectives. I like to view these as different angles from which to investigate, analyze and observe what's happening in a society. So they're not necessarily competing against each other. Although researchers might propose that one theory is a better explanation than another. So there are three of them, conflict theory, functionalism, otherwise known as structural functionalism and symbolic interactionism. These I find to be the most confusing aspect of sociology, but once we have them nailed down, they are again, a very good tool to see society. So conflict theory. Conflict theory suggests that a way to explain something that's happening in society is due to conflict or a power differential between groups. This could be between an entity, it could be between an industry and people that the industry affects or serves. It could be two different countries with different interests. It could even be two social groups in society like men and women comparing different races as far as their social experience and their social power. So in other words, conflict theory is explaining what's happening by identifying who's making the rules. And if they're making the rules, then whatever's happening is benefiting them. Moving on to functionalism. Sometimes functionalism is described as society being like the human body, in which case if something happens in one body part or in one bodily system, it's going to affect other systems. So a functionalist perspective looks at social problems, for example, as being affected by other institutions. So for example, if there is a problem within education, maybe there's a very low graduation rate at the high school level. And so you would look at the institution, say of the family or of the economy as affecting that problem. So if the economy in a certain area is doing very bad, it's a very impoverished area, you might have students that are in home situations where they have the power shut off or they don't have running water. They don't have what they need at a basic level to be able to go to school and thrive. So functionalism, looking at one institution or multiple social institutions and look at how those affect 
problems that occur maybe in another area of society. And then finally, symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism explains phenomena in society by looking at the meaning behind certain behaviors. So this is kind of overlapping with psychology. If there is a certain perception of something that people may do in society, that can influence that behavior. It also has to do with the socialization and the messaging that we get from media, for example, that can alter our views, our attitudes, and that can influence our behavior. So for example, if we constantly get media messages that using substances is seen as cool or elevating a social status, that may play a part in a higher rate of substance use in that culture. There are many different examples and the examples I provided are still at the theoretical level. And so we take those theories, those possible connections, and then we move into the research phase where we're collecting data, we're examining these relationships, and we are testing different ideas on how they're related to each other. Social theories help us develop the sociological imagination, seeing the big picture and how it's affecting trends in our societies.